Item number, SCP-528, Object Class, Euclid, Special Containment Procedures. All items designated SCP-528 are to be kept inside of their individual containers when not in use. In the case of a missing or damaged container, a new, non-individualized container will be commissioned. All containers of SCP-528 are to be kept in secure storage locker Z-12 at Site-23. Senior staff at Site-23 are to be given the combination to said locker. No one of lower class than three is approved to work on SCP-528. The combination is to be changed on a weekly basis. Description There are currently seven instances of SCP-528 in Foundation control. SCP-528 can be found in small, red plastic containers, visually identical to those used by the Silly Putty Corporation, except that the Silly Putty logo has been replaced by the factory. SCP-528 appears to be an inorganic polymer, composed of 65% dimethyl siloxane, hydroxyl-terminated polymers with boric acid, 17% silica, crystalline quartz, 9% thixotrol ST, castor oil derivative, 4% polydimethyl siloxane, 1% decamethyl cyclopentasiloxane, 1% glycerin, and 1% titanium dioxide. While similar to common silly putty, SCP-528 has several differences. It has proven to be completely resistant to tearing, although indentation and apparent cuts are possible. When formed into a ball and thrown, SCP-528 bounces twice as much as the regular kind. The main difference, however, is that SCP-528 is capable of copying any picture of a human being it is pressed upon, no matter if ink is involved. It can retain an image from paper, photo paper, even from a television or computer screen. Once an image has been placed on SCP-528, the only ways to remove it are to crumple SCP-528 into a ball, or to apply rubbing alcohol. Any actions taken upon SCP-528 affect the individual pictured as well, usually resulting in the death of the pictured individual. Test 1 SCP-528 applied to picture of D-528-1 Pressure applied to SCP-528, causing the image's arm to stretch. D-528-1 screamed in pain, his own arm stretching one inch per centimeter the image was stretched. Detailed x-rays reveal bones and flesh of D-528-1 to have been data expunged. At approximately five inches stretching of SCP-528, a gap formed in the image. D-528-1's arm came off at the same place, bloodlessly. Further testing revealed that while D-528-1 was still affected by SCP-528, his arm no longer was. Test 2 SCP-528, still bearing the image of D-528-1, is doused in rubbing alcohol in attempt to remove image. As alcohol is applied to parts of the image, analogous parts on D-528-1 vanish. When the torso is wiped away, D-528-1 ceases life functions. At this point, SCP-528 ceases to apply to D-528-1 and is cleaned with no further incidents. Test 3 SCP-528 applied to image of D-528-2. SCP-528 is then crumpled into a ball, the image of D-528-2 on the inside. D-528-2 is condensed into a ball as well. However, his bones do not break, and Subject continues to scream until his head is rolled into his abdomen. At this point, it is believed Subject suffocates, as SCP-528 stops applying to D-528-2. When unrolled flat, image of D-582-2 is no longer visible on SCP-528. Test 4 SCP-528 applied to image of D-528-3. SCP-528 is then immersed in boiling water. D-528-3 begins to complain of the heat. After approximately five minutes, the image of D-528-3 on SCP-528 begins to run. D-528-3 begins to scream as he melts. 
flesh and bone both sagging equally. Testing is concluded when his nose melts over his mouth, blocking his breathing, and leading to his suffocation. Note: Although clothes are duplicated in the transference of ink, they are not affected by SCP-528 in any way. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-527, Mr. Fish, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.